Welcome to our webinar, Superannuation for Women. This webinar is brought to you by the Financial Information Service of Services Australia. Today, we're talking all things superannuation for women. My name is Donna, and I'm a Financial Information Service Officer. And today, I'll be joined by my colleague, Jodie. Together, Jodie and I aim to build your confidence and understanding of your superannuation. Did you know that the majority of women will retire with less superannuation than males? While preparing for today, I was reminded that the majority of women will, will retire with approximately $67,000 less in super than men, even though us women live longer than men. Many women do take career breaks to raise their families, and this often results in years without contributions into superannuation. This is often followed by years of part-time or casual work, which adds to the reduced super balance by the time we hit our retirement age. Today's webinar aims to share tips and hints on how women in particular can boost their superannuation savings. By the end, we hope that you will have an action list of things to look out for and more confidence with how you can have financial security in your retirement. Today, I join you from Noongar country in Western Australia. The Wujak people are the traditional custodians of the land where I sit today. I would like to pause and say thanks to the Wujak people for looking after these lands and waterways. I'm grateful for the ongoing connections to culture, land and water. These connections allow me to work and play in this area. Today, as we are a collective across many different lands, so on behalf of the webinar crew, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all the different lands that we, are, we live on and that you are joining us from today. I pay my respects to all elders past and present of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations. Before we get started with our topic, it is important to understand that this information in the webinar is a guide only. It is current at a particular date and is subject to change. So please refer to our website for further information and to keep up to date with any legislative changes. Grab a pen and paper to create your action list. Let's get comfy and start thinking about all things super. For those of you who are new to our live webinars, we offer a live Q&A. On the right hand side of your screen, you will find a question box. If it is not visible, you can click on the icon at the top of your screen. Now that icon looks a little bit like a speech bubble with a question mark on it, and this will open the Q&A window for you. As women who can multitask, you can have the Q&A window open at the same time as we are going through today's presentation. You can type any questions that you have and these will be answered by one of our moderators. If we think your question is one that everyone should know the answer to, we may publish it for all to see. Other questions, we may just send a reply back to you. It's very important for us to protect your privacy. So when you go to type in a question, please use your first name only, or alternatively, tick the box to send your question anonymously. Now, depending on how we're going for time today, we may also keep the Q&A window open at the end for a few extra questions that you might think of. Now, during this time, it would be ideal for those who didn't have the Q&A open during the event to head back and have a look at all the great questions that have been asked. During today's presentation, the topics that we will be covering are su understanding superannuation. So we're going to look at how to increase your contributions before, during or after a career break and how to boost your overall superannuation contributions. We will talk about how and when you can access your superannuation and we'll share tips and hints as well as trusted tools and resources. A great feature of this webinar is that you get to watch a recording. You can click on the original link at the end of the event or by visiting our website or YouTube channel where all of our previous recordings are available. I'm passionate about the role of financial information service. So let me tell you a little more about the role and who can and who we can uh, sorry my apologies there and who we may be able to help. So financial information service or FIS as we're often known provides us uh, provides a free and confidential service that is available to all members of the public not just people who are getting Centrelink payments. Our FIS officers will provide you with information and education to help you understand your financial options. 
Please be aware that this is information only and that we do not provide advice. Now you might be thinking, so what does all of that mean? And when would someone reach out to the Financial Information Service? As a FIS officer, I am often talking to people who have queries regarding credit, receiving a lump sum, maybe from compensation or a redundancy payment. They're planning for their retirement or, tra or transitioning a loved one into aged care. Or you might just say, well, I'd like to learn some more about my super after today's session. It could be that you're wanting to build financial confidence to learn where to start so that you have more certainty. As FIS officers, we can explain the principles of budgeting and what tools are available, how to review and reduce bills, or even provide you with information on insurances and investments. We are here to help by phone, in person, and we even offer video chat calls. Superannuation can be confusing, so let's start by just calling it super. And to put it simply, super is an account that we use for saving for our retirement. Your employer is required to pay what we call super guarantee. Now, this is also known as SG. It's a percentage of your earnings and is currently 11%. For some of us, retirement is closer than it is for others. However, the choices that we make today can have an impact on the type of lifestyle we can expect to have in our retirement. I speak to a lot of people who are not able to answer this question. So I'd like you to think about what would your answer be? So the question is, have you thought about your retirement goals? For me, it is to be debt free and have the financial freedom to travel around in my caravan and to enjoy quality time with my family and friends. We often hear people say that you need to maximise your super, but have you ever wondered what does that mean? I'm often asked why do we use super to save and why is it so special? Super gets a tax concession and you might again say so. So this actually means that you will most likely pay less tax on your super contribution than your wage as super contribution tax is 15%. Super in Australia is heavily regulated, meaning that your super fund will have to follow many rules and regulations to protect your money. Now, as well as the tax concession, your super gets a social security concession. So if you are under age pension age, your funds that are in the accumulation phase, they will not be included when assessing any Centrelink payment. Now, there is a trade-off for these concessions. Generally, you cannot access money held in super until you meet certain conditions of release, and they are commonly preservation age and retirement. So now that we have the reason for super, so that's to save during our working life so that we have money to live on in retirement, what is the retirement income policy in Australia? It's made up of three components and many people will rely on a combination of all three at some point in their retirement. Now I call it the hamburger. The top bun is compulsory super, known as SG. The patty is voluntary savings and super contributions. So that could be a tax refund or salary sacrifice. And we'll discuss this more a little later on. And lastly, the bottom bun is our means tested age pension, which is a safety net, meaning that there is support available when your income and assets drop below a certain threshold. Now, before we launch into the different types of super, when was the last time you checked your super balance? And do you actually read your annual statement? Knowing the type of fund that you have and reading your annual statement is really important. And if you're not sure which one you have, why not make that an action item to go and have a look? I think it's also important to know that all super funds in Australia do operate by a trust and the trust deed establishes the basis of calculating each member's entitlement. It sets out the fund's objectives, who can be a member and how the benefits are paid. Now you may have heard of some of these types of funds, so let's explore them a little bit now. So we've got retail funds and they are usually run by banks or investment companies and they aim to keep some of the profits for their shareholders. 
We have industry funds generally open to anyone. Now, previously, they were just for those in specific industries like hospitality or health, and they are profit for member funds, meaning that the profits are put back into the fund. We've got public sector funds. Now, these were created for government employees and they include those older style defined benefit schemes. Now, during today's session, we're not going to talk about defined benefit schemes. You've probably heard of a thing called a self-managed fund. Well, as the name sounds, you are managing that. However, it is still operates by a trust. We've got retirement savings accounts, sometimes known as RSAs, and they operate much like a bank account, but you are required to comply with superannuation regulations. Now, in addition to these main five types of funds, there are also corporate and employer sponsored funds, and these are arranged by the employer for their employees. And we have ATO accounts. Now, these accounts hold money for lost super or inactive members with low super balances. Keeping up with the changes to super can feel a little overwhelming. There's lots of information out there and you might be saying, well, who can I trust? So here are three places that you might want to add to your action list and all three are reliable and safe places for you to boost your super confidence. Let's start with your own super fund. Have a look on their website or you might even log into your online, ac online account. You will be able to access lots of great information there. Many funds also offer fact sheets and free education sessions such as webinars. Now, as the ATO is one of the main regulators of super and super sits under tax law, visiting the ATO website means that you are going directly to the source to get your information. And lastly, moneysmart.gov.au is an easy to read and understand website with lots of great calculators. The website is published by ASIC, Australian Security Investment Commission, another one of Super's regulators. Now, if you're like me and you love a calculator, adding this website to your action list is a good idea. Now, did you know that you've actually got choice in how your super fund invests your money? Your super fund could pay your money into what's called a My Super or a Choice Super account. Do you know which one you have? I would encourage you to check with your super fund if you're not sure. So a My Super is a simple low fees account. It's often called the default account and generally have either a single diversified or a life cycle investment option. Now, a super choice account offers a range of ways to invest your money, including pre-mixed investment options. So with these, you are actively making a choice about where your super is invested rather than going with the default my super option. Now, I know it can feel overwhelming and at times something that we just say, oh, it's a bit hard, let's put it in the too hard basket. But you do have a choice and these choices can impact your financial future. Super is one of those things that many of us do just leave and forget about. But by taking the time to have a look at your investment options, you can make a big difference to how your super grows. You've probably heard people talk about risk when they talk about investing and that it's a good idea to know your risk profile. So your risk profile gives you an indication of your risk tolerance. This is the degree of uncertainty that you are prepared to accept in relation to investment returns. And at the end of the day, you need to be comfortable with the level of risk. You don't want to be lying awake at night stressing about it because as women, we have enough on our plate and we don't need to add that as well. There are many free risk profile tools available online and your super fund may even have one on their website for you to use. An action item might be to find out your tolerance to risk, as this will assist you with your investment options. Now, if you do discover that your risk profile doesn't match your current investment choices, don't panic, just take some action. When thinking about investment choices, it is important to also understand some terminology. So the first one that I'm going to introduce is asset classes and that there are four main asset classes. So they are cash, bonds, property and shares. 
Now, investments can be made up with a single asset class or a variety of asset classes. And depending on the mix of assets, you will see different returns and risks. All investments have some risk of degree, some sorry, degree of risk. A low risk profile investor may hold more assets in cash and bonds. And for someone that is more comfortable with risk, they could invest in shares and property. So when you look at your statement, you might see words like conservative or defensive, maybe balanced or growth. So what does that actually mean? Well, we now know that they're not asset classes because that's cash, bonds, property and shares. So these words are the names for the pre-mixed investment options. So my hint here is don't focus on the name. Look at the mix of asset classes in the investment option when you're looking to see if it suits you. So a conservative fund would typically have 70% in cash and bonds and 30% in property and shares. And as a balanced fund, it might typically be the reversed. So 30% in cash and bonds and 70% in property and shares. Now, it is important to also consider diversifying your investments, identify gaps and research other options. So let me give you an example. If you own a house and an investment property would then not help you to diversify. Because if property prices were to fall, all of your assets will decrease and you don't have other investments to balance out that loss. So to diversify, you could invest in different types of asset classes like shares or bonds. Now, with some asset classes, say shares, you can diversify by investing in different market sectors. So if you're mainly invested in one sector, let's just say that was mining, you could research other sectors like energy, healthcare or financials, just to name a few. Now, another thing for your action list is to check your fund's website or your annual statement to see how your funds are being invested. But you might say, well, what are you looking for? So I'd encourage you to see, is there diversity? And do these investments meet your risk profile? Now, you know that saying one size fits all. Well, it's not quite too true when we think about investors. We are all different. We are likely to have similar goals and we may be using the same product, say super, to reach that goal. However, our time frames and our risk tolerances may vary greatly. So if you need some help choosing the right investment, you could speak with a financial advisor or talk to your super fund. Now, the Money Smart website has heaps of information on how to choose the right financial advisor for you and a list of accredited licensed providers. For many of us, our super will be one of our biggest assets by the time we retire. And sadly, statistics would show that one in four women will retire with no super at all. So joining us today is a great step in boosting your super knowledge and knowing what you can take control of. I've talked about knowing your options and we hear that we should do research. But what are we actually looking for when we're doing that research? Now, when researching your options, you should consider things like um, what I'm about to mention, but don't worry if you haven't heard these terms before and they might be new to you. So some of the terms might be return. So we're saying what is the expected return on the investment? That's what you're looking for. Does it come from income or capital growth? So what's the time frame? How long do you need to invest to get the expected return? Risk, what does the risk, um, what type of risk does it involve? Are you comfortable with taking on these risks? Access to cash. Now, sometimes that's called liquidity. So how long will it take to sell the investment and for you to get the cash out? We encourage you to look at cost to buy and sell. So how much does it actually cost to buy and sell the investment? Don't forget about tax. How much tax will you pay on the earnings from the investment? Is it income tax or is it capital gains? 
You could find the answers to all of these questions by looking in the product disclosure statement or what's called a PDS. So the PDS is the document that the financial service provider must give you when they recommend or offer a financial product. It must include information about products key features, fees, any commissions, benefits, risks and the complaints handling procedure. Now, while you can open a super account without making a contribution, you are going to need to have money in there before any investment can be done. So who can make a contribution and how does your super grow? Well, anyone under the age of 75 can contribute into super. And the great news is there is no need to have worked or actually have an existing account i.e. the super fund, in order to make the contribution. Now your super is going to grow by making a contribution and the investment returns. So the contribution just means putting money into super and an investment return could be interest on the bank money, uh, share dividends, rental income or an increased unit price leading to capital growth. So let's now take a look at the types of super contributions and the associated caps. Now I'm going to also share some different names that these contributions can be called. Now both of the contributions have annual caps. So the first one is a concessional contribution. Now these are also known as employer or before tax contributions. Now when you make a concessional contribution, it is from money that you have not yet paid tax on. The current limit is 27,500 per annum. And if you are accessing the carry forward rules, this amount would be higher. And I'll give you more detail on this one shortly. So the non-concessional contributions are also known as personal contributions or after-tax contributions. And when you make a non-concessional contribution, it is from money that you have paid tax on and the current limit is 110,000 per annum. Now this would also be higher if you are using something known as the bring forward rule. Now the bring forward rule allows you to put up to 330,000 into super in one financial year if you meet certain criteria. So if you'd like more information about those criteria, your super fund or the financial information service can assist. So what contributions are considered a concessional contribution? Well, the first one is the super SG. As I mentioned earlier, that's currently 11%. Now, your employer may offer a higher super um, contribution under an award or an industrial agreement. So this might be another thing that you want to add to your list to check what does your employer pay you. So what are voluntary super contributions? They most commonly come through a salary sacrifice and it might be an additional employer contribution or a carry forward contribution. These are sometimes also known as the unused cap amount and they now carry forward from five previous financial years. Now the ATO has lots of great information on the carry forward contributions and my tip for concessional contributions is to ensure that the combination of SG and salary sacrifice does not exceed the annual cap of 27,500. The easiest way for you to check available cap amounts is via your MyGov under ATO and superannuation. So as you can see on this um, slide now, the superannuation guarantee is steadily rising until it reaches 12% and that will occur in July of 2025. Now these extra contributions that, you, that are put in by your employer will definitely help your super balance to grow and get you closer to your retirement goals. But to boost it even further, you could make a non-concessional contribution. So as mentioned earlier, non-concessional contributions come from our after-tax pay. Now these deposits co commonly come from our savings, maybe a windfall, say lotto or even inheritance, or it could be the proceeds from the sale of an asset. Now a non-concessional contribution also forms the tax-free part of our super balances and Jody will talk us through that later. 
I've been asked many times, can my partner boost my super? Now, the answer is yes, and there are two main ways that this can be done. So let's start with contributing, contribution splitting and what, act, it is, what it is. So it is the process of splitting the concessional contribution from one fund to another. So your partner's concessional contribution is split and contributed into your fund. And it is usually done at the end of the financial year and you can split a maximum of 85% of the concessional contribution. Now, the second is by making a spouse contribution. This means that the spouse pays money into your super account from their after-tax income, and they may be eligible to get a tax offset for doing so. So to find out more about the offset and who might be who it is available to, have a look on the ATO website. Now, I have had personal experience with both of these contributions when I took a break from full-time work. I had that warm feeling that I still had money going into my super fund and my husband got the benefit of the tax offset. So some might say it was a win-win. Let's now take a look at some of the other types of contributions. We will look at salary sacrifice, downsizer contribution and the first home super saver scheme. Now you might not have heard of the last two. Now I have mentioned salary sacrifice earlier, so let's now take a deeper look into it. So salary sacrifice is when you ask your employer to pay a part of your pre-taxed pre -taxed salary into your super account before it is paid to you. Now this can be known as salary packaging. The payment is called a concessional contribution and it goes toward the 27,500 per annum cap. The contribution is taxed at entry at 15%. For most people, this will be lower than their marginal tax rate. So you will benefit because you pay less tax while you boost your retirement savings in the form of super. So generally making the extra con concessional contribution is it's tax effective if you earn more than about 45,000 per year. For more information, you could go to the Money Smart website. Now let me introduce you to Mary and an example of salary sacrifice. I find that working through a case study often helps with understanding this concept. So Mary has recently had an increase in her pay. She wants to use the extra money wisely. After working on her budget, Mary determines that she can afford to make a contribution into her super of $2,000. If Mary made it as an after-tax contribution, she would end up contributing 1,310 of the 2,000 into super due to paying tax and the Medicare levy. What if Mary made the 2000 contribution as a before tax contribution, so the salary sacrifice? The tax on the contribution would be at 15%, so this means that 1700 would go into her super account. So that additional $390 is going in from the same 2000 contribution. Now, what are the long-term effects? Now, we're looking at a 10-year time frame here, and we're assuming an annual return of 6%. Now, you can see that the additional $390 plus any investment interest has given you an extra $5,140 in your total balance so that's great. Money Smart has heaps of cal calculators that are available to you, such as a compounded interest one. So why not have a play and look at those calculators with your own scenarios? Now, before I wrap up on salary sacrifice, I'd like you to be aware of, that there could be additional costs such as a salary package or an administration fee. And please check your recent contributions to ensure that you remain under the concessional caps. And as with any significant change or decision regarding your finances, it's always advisable to seek professional advice before you make any final decisions to make sure that they are right for you and your circumstances. So let's now move our thoughts over to the First Home Super Saver Scheme. Now, many Australians do dream of owning their own home. However, saving for the deposit 
is often challenging and we can be very tempted to use some of those savings on other things. So this is where the first home super saver can be helpful as this scheme allows first home buyers to save for their home deposit inside superannuation. And you can find more information about this on the ATO website. Now, the last type of contribution that I'd like to cover is downsizer contribution. And this is important for our ladies here that might be over 55 or approaching 55. Anyone 55 years or older can contribute into super using the sale proceeds from their principal home. Now, that home needs to have been in Australia and your principal home for 10 years or more. This contribution does sit outside of the non-concessional contributions cap, so it is in addition. One important thing to note is that you need to make the downsizer contribution into your super within 90 days of receiving these proceeds of sale. So that date is usually your settlement date. So 90 days after that. And, anyone, and there is only one contribution that can be made. So the ATO website is a great spot for gathering all the finer details and eligibility for the downsizer contribution. So it's over to you now, Jodie. Thanks, Donna. Now let's talk tax and super. If you make contributions from your own money, whether that be from your net wages or from savings, there is no tax payable. These contributions count towards your tax-free component and are referred to as non-concessional contributions. Employer contributions, which covers the super guarantee, additional employer contributions and salary sacrificed amounts, are taxed at the concessional rate of 15%. These are referred to as concessional contributions. Your money in super is invested. Remember you can choose how and generate re generates returns along the way. These returns are taxed at a maximum, of, maximum rate of 15%. Australian shares held within super funds that offer franking credits will lower the tax rate even further. Capital gains tax is the tax applied to the increased value of an item from when it was purchased to when it was sold. Within super, after a discount is applied, the tax rate for capital gains is just 10%. This is much lower than the tax rate on gains realised outside of super. There are a couple of options available to help boost super balances for low income earners. The first is the low income super tax offset. You are eligible to the maximum offset if your adjusted taxable income is less than $37,000 a year and as long as 10% or more of your income is from employment or self-employment. It works by offsetting the 15% contributions tax up to a maximum of $500, which is refunded into your super account once your tax return has been completed. The second option is the superannuation co-contribution payment. This payment's made by the government to people who make personal contributions to super and have total income less than the higher income threshold. The maximum amount the government will contribute is $500. You don't need to apply for government contributions. If you're eligible and your super fund has your tax file number, it will be paid to your super fund automatically. In most cases, you can choose which super fund you would like your super contributions to be paid into. You can use an existing fund, your employer's fund, or you can choose a totally different fund. If you're eligible to choose a fund, you can choose do this by using the superannuation standard choice form. Your employer will give you the form when you start work, and this sets out your options. If you don't choose a super fund, your employer must check with the ATO to see if you have an existing fund. This is known as a stapled super fund. If you don't have an existing fund, the employer will pay your super into a default super product chosen by them, known as a My Super product. So where do you start when choosing a super fund? Let's consider a bit of a checklist. All super funds charge fees. These are either a dollar amount or a percentage or both. Fees are usually deducted monthly and after an action like switching investments. When comparing the performance of super funds, it's a good idea to look at the performance over the last five years. Compare like with like. For example, if you're considering a balanced option, only compare with other balanced options. 
your employer may offer to match your voluntary contributions up to a limit to persuade you to stay with their preferred fund. The ease of accessing information for a particular fund. What does their website look like? How easy is it to speak with them over the phone? And insurance options available may influence your decision. To make this process easier, you can use the Your Super Comparison tool on the ATO website or through your MyGov account. It displays My Super products, ranking them by fees and net returns. The Money Smart website also has information to help you. Super funds typically have three types of insurance for members, and these are life insurance. This is paid when you pass away to financially help those you leave behind, also known as a death benefit. It can be paid as a lump sum or an income stream. Total and permanent disability cover. This pays a benefit if you become seriously disabled and unlikely to work again. And income protection, which pays you an income if you are temporarily unable to, to work due to illness or injury. It's generally capped at two years. If you haven't put any money into super for 16 months or longer, you need to check with your fund that you're still eligible to the insurance options. Like all insurance, there are lots of rules and options, and these are covered in the super funds product disclosure statement. Do you know what happens to your super when you pass away? When you pass away, your super fund mate can pay any money in your account to your dependents, also called beneficiaries. These are people who depend on you financially, like your partner and or children. It's important to tell your super fund who you want your money to go to when you pass away. Most funds have the option to complete a binding beneficiary nomination form. Generally, these are valid for three years. You should check if your binding nomination is still current. Some funds have a non-lapsing binding nomination, which doesn't mean set and forget. A binding nomination should be reviewed after any big life changes to make sure it's still correct, for example, after a separation or divorce. If you don't nominate someone, your super fund gets to choose who gets your money. If there's no one who meets the super fund rules, working out who gets these funds may be done through a legal process, which can be costly. These costs will be deducted from your super balance. So it's best if you can nominate a beneficiary or make a will to ensure your money goes to the right people when you pass away. If you change jobs or you've had a few jobs, it might be worth checking your MyGov ATO online account. You can view all of your super accounts here and their balances. You might even have some funds you've got, had forgotten about. If you have multiple super accounts, you can easily consolidate them online through your MyGov account. Super is your money in your name to provide you with an income in retirement. There are strict laws about when you can access super. Watch out for people who suggest you can withdraw your super early for a fee. There are significant penalties that apply for breaching these laws. To help, we'll now run through when and how super can be accessed. Once you reach 65, you can access your super irrespective of your work status. There are a couple of super funds around that prevent the member from accessing their funds if they're still working. In these limited circumstances, the fund member may be able to apply for a ministerial exemption from Services Australia to have these funds exempt from the age pension assessment whilst they are inaccessible. You can access your super if you've reached your preservation age and have retired. Your preservation age is dependent on your date of birth. Let's consider a person born on the 7th of June 1964. Their preservation age would be 59. If they ceased working on or after their 59th birthday, they would be able to access their super. You can access your super if you're over preservation age and still working through what's called a transition to retirement pension. A transition to retirement pension is a series of regular or annual payments. These payments over a financial year cannot be more than 10% of your account balance. These pensions are common, commonly accessed by people wanting to reduce their working hours gradually, working hours gradually, gradually transitioning from full-time employment to retired. Super can be accessed through strict financial hardship provisions and compassionate grounds. There are rules that apply to each of these release conditions. 
For more information, see the link provided to the ATO website. And the final release condition is the first home super saver scheme, which we covered earlier. Depending on when you access your, your accumulation super fund, different tax rules apply. For those 60 and over, super benefits paid from a tax source are tax free and don't need to be declared in your tax return. If your preservation age up to 59, you can withdraw up to $235,000 tax free any excess will be taxed at 17%. For those under preservation age, you'll be taxed at 22% on the withdrawal. Careful consideration should be given to accessing your super prior to turning preservation age. So how do Services Australia assess your super? While you're under age pension age, your super in an accumulation account doesn't count towards your income and assets when calculating rates of pensions and allowances. If you roll your super into an income stream, which includes the transition to retirement pensions, which we covered earlier, it will be counted irrespective of your age. So hopefully this sums up what we've spoken about so far. If you think about your super account like an ordinary savings account, you have incomings and outgoings. Be sure to check your annual statement to keep track of these transactions. And your payslips can be another useful resource to check that your employer's compulsory contributions are being made. You've made it to the end goal, retirement. After putting in the extra effort and attention to your super along the way, your investment may look a little sweeter. So what happens to your super in retirement? Well, upon retirement and reaching a condition of release, you have three main options. You can leave your money in the accumulation account, this is the account it's in whilst you are working. You can take a lump sum or you can roll the funds into a retirement income stream, also known as an account based pension. Some people find using a combination of these options suits their needs. Sadly, we're seeing more and more cases of financial abuse and elder abuse. Financial abuse is a form of family and domestic violence. If you see any warning signs listed here occurring in the relationships of people you care for or you yourself, please reach out for help by contacting 1800 RESPECT, which is 1800 737 732. Remember, Services Australia has a team of dedicated social workers and there are lots of not-for-profit organisations that can provide a range of support services. Now, I'm just having a quick uh, scroll through the questions and answer chat. I can see some terrific questions being posted. Here's a great question. I have lots of super funds and I've had lots of jobs. How do I find my super accounts? So to find your lost super online, you'll need a MyGov account linked to the Australian Taxation Office. Alternatively, you can complete a super search by phoning the ATO automated super search line on 132865. Remember, if you have questions about your personal financial circumstances or maybe don't feel confident to type the questions here, you can always contact the Financial Information Service. You can do this by calling any business line in Services Australia and when prompted about the reason for your call, Safe Financial Information Service. The Money Smart website is designed to help Australians take control of their money with free tools, tips and guidance. This website's a fantastic resource to help you and your family research and make informed decisions about your finances. Making informed decisions leads to greater, greater financial wellbeing. Services Australia has a range of online tools and self-service options to assist you, including our apps and online accounts. Firstly, we have our MyGov app, which you can download from the App Store or Play Store. This app allows you to access your government services in one place. These include Services Australia, which delivers Centrelink payments, Medicare, Australian Tax Office, Child Support and NDIS to name a few. Another thing you can do through your MyGov account is find your lost super. Currently in Australia, there is $16 billion of lost super. So some of this could be yours, especially if you've changed jobs, moved address, 
lived overseas or changed your name. You may have unintentionally lost some of your super. To find your lost super, jump online using your MyGov account, link to the ATO, click on Manage My Super and see what's there. In addition to the MyGov app, you can also access individual apps for Centrelink, Child Support and Medicare through our Express Plus apps. This allows you to access a particular service directly and can be really convenient for those on the go. Just remember, for those people out there listening, if you're not feeling confident using the apps or online services, you're able to make an appointment for digital coaching in office. By bringing along your device, such as a smartphone or iPad or tablet, we can work with you one on one. We can show you how to do updates and claim payments. Our YouTube channel featuring our financial information offices has snippets of information on a range of topics such as gifting, inheritance, the family home, compensation and returning to work. After our live events, our webinars are also available for viewing on YouTube. If you're watching these webinars on YouTube, you'll find the links provided in today's Q&A in the event summary. You can talk to one of us by calling 132300 or any of our main business lines and say financial information service when asked why you're calling. We can chat over the phone, we can arrange a video chat appointment or make a face-to-face -face appointment for more complex issues. You may also see us out and about in the community. Our live event webinars cover a broad range of topics, including money options, superannuation, retrenchment and looking for work, disability and carers, aged care fees and charges, and age pension and your choices. We're adding to these each and every month. You can check upcoming webinars on the Services Australia website. Some of the specialised ways that we can support you include the multilingual phone service for those who like to access our services in their preferred language, the Indigenous call centre, social workers and grandparent foster and kinship care advisors. To help you move forward with your financial future, here's a bit of an action checklist or maybe along the way you've made your own to-do list with tasks related to your newfound super knowledge. Finally, thank you for taking the time to attend today's Super for Women session. Hopefully we've been able to assist you in learning more about super. If you found today's session valuable, please spread the word to your family and friends. You can scroll through the Q&A window to see the published questions and answers and helpful links. The Q&A window will remain open for the next few minutes and our team of moderators will be online to answer any last questions. Once again, thank you for joining us.